want you to stand with me and open your Bible in John chapter 4, verses number verse number 4, down to verse number 10. Amen. And then we will jump to verse number 29 up to verse number 35. Ready? Let's read together and go. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then come with thee to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of the crown that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Joseph well was there. Jesus therefore being weary with his journey, sat thus to the well, and it was about six hours. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy me. Verse 9, Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who is it that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would have given the living water. Alright, verse 29 until verse 35. Ready, go. Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. And in the meanwhile, while his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meant to eat that you know not all. Therefore say the disciples unto one another, Hath any man brought him out to thee? And Jesus said unto them, My need is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Verse 35, Say that ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Do you believe the Bible is the Word of God? Yes! Amen? We believe that the Bible was written by men, supernaturally inspired. Amen? And the Word of God is true without any admixture of error for its matter. And therefore is and shall remain to the end of the age the only complete and final revelations of the will of God to men. Amen. We believe that this book is the true center of Christian faith. Amen? Amen? The supreme standard by which all human conducts, your opinions, and creeds needs to be tried. If you live in contrary to the Bible, let the Bible stand firm. Amen? Amen. And God, let us ask God's grace to change our life. And you know what? Every individual who will stand in judgment with the Word of God, the Bible clearly states that we ought to be humble enough. Because none of us, nothing in us, dwelleth good things. We are all limited. Our minds are limited. We cannot comprehend what the Word of God says. In fact, from the moment that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, all the disciples were so frightened. They were so afraid. Even from the moment that they, that Jesus Christ was buried on the grave. And for three days and three nights, the disciples were gathered together in one room. And they were so afraid. They were so afraid what will happen to them. Because they did not fully grasp the whole thoughts and plan of God in their lives. You know, when you cannot understand... When you cannot comprehend the plan of God from eternity, past, present, and future, chances are you will be afraid with your life. All right. Amen? You will be afraid. They were so afraid. They were gathered in the upper room, all of them. Uh, you know, there was fear in, in the congregation. They were all silent because Jesus Christ is already dead. Because all their life, they were thinking... They were thinking that Jesus Christ will reign as a King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh -huh. That is why when Jesus had the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, they got some uh, palm leaves and they, they have to wave palm leaves. They have to put leaves because the entry of Jesus Christ for them is the, is the only hope that Jesus Christ is going to reign already as the King of Kings. But they did not understand 
that the entry of Jesus Christ in Jerusalem is not to rule as a king but to die as a servant and as a savior. Okay? Amen? So when they came in, when Jesus came in, they were so happy and uh, the disciples were so glad because Jesus Christ is already going to reign. They did not understand that before God will reign, the Lord Jesus Christ must die first. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? Except the form of which shall fall into the ground and then die, it will not bring forth life. It will not multiply. And that's the very reason why that the disciples were so afraid. They were so frightened. Otherwise, they might just be waiting for the soldiers to come and then capture them and put them in prison. But you know, it did not happen. Why? Because the Bible says, after three days and three nights, the Lord Jesus Christ was buried. By that time, in the early morning, Sunday, He rose up from the grave. Amen. And that is a victory to the believers. And when He rose up, He stayed with them, and then He lived the great urgency of going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen? Amen. And so many times, people are surprised. There are three kinds of people that were surprised when Jesus Christ deal on this account in John chapter 4. Number one, the Samaritan woman was surprised. Why was she? Why was uh, she, she? She was surprised. Number one, because she did not knew the plan of God from eternity past, present, and future. The woman said, "And to and to the Lord Jesus Christ, how is he that?" Thou, being a Jew, ask it, drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria. And you imagine she was so surprised why Jesus Christ was asking water to the Samaritan woman. It was a surprise. Amen? Amen. Secondly, the disciples were also surprised. They were so surprised. In verse number 27, And upon this came his disciple <coughs> and marveled. The word marveled, they were so surprised why Jesus was talking to the woman. In other words, the disciples did not knew that the plan of God for saving souls, He does not place any partiality. Uh -huh. Amen? Uh -huh. The Lord Jesus Christ loves all kinds of people. Amen. But the disciples, they were so surprised why Jesus was talking to the woman. Yet no one said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? And then another crowd were surprised, because after the woman got saved, the woman left her water pot, went to the whole city of Samaria, in Sychar, and she was telling the people, Come, I want you to see a man, verse number 29, which told me all things that ever I did, is not this the Christ. And folks, if you are saved, are you saved this afternoon? Amen. If you are saved, if you are saved, you must be willing to go out and bring people to come in to hear the gospel. Amen. If you do not know how to bring people to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, something is wrong with your salvation. Are you saved this afternoon? Amen. You must be willing to go and tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Because God did not only save us for nothing. If you are saved, there is always that inner desire to go and tell the people about the Lord Jesus Christ, about what God has done in your life. Amen. Amen. If you are already five years old Christians, I hope you have already five new believers coming and you have introduced to the Lord. Uh -huh. wow. Ang masama doon, 10 years ka na sa pagiging Christian mo, wala ka pa naakay na kaluluwa sa Panginoon. That's worse. Amen? Amen. Amen? There might be something wrong with your salvation. If you are saved, you must be willing to go into all the world. Why this lady was surprised? Why the people were surprised? And why the disciples were surprised? Number one, they had entertained wrong thinking. Uh -huh. They had the wrong thoughts. 
They were thinking that salvation is only for the Jews. In fact, the woman, because of her background, if you try to check the background of the Samaritan woman at the well of Jacob, the woman was telling to the Lord Jesus Christ, in verse number 9, How is it that thou being a Jew asketh drink of me, which I am from Samaria? You see, the woman entertained wrong thinking. In other words, she had this kind of strongholds that is creeping in her mind because of what the Jews did to the, to the place in Samaria. You know, in Jerusalem, they had to place all the rapists, all the criminals, and all kinds of, uh, of people that are outcasts. And then they place it to Samaria. And because of that, there was a mixture of marriages in Samaria. It caused the people in Samaria to hate the Jewish people. With all that background in life, you know, we praise God that the American missionaries brought the gospel to the Philippines. Amen? Amen. What a joy! Yeah. We had an American missionary by the name of Dr. Bob Hughes. He told the people in Cebu the blessing of living and having a simple faith. If you have 10 eggs, one egg belongs. No, if your chicken has 10 eggs, one egg belongs to the Lord. Amen? That's the blessing of simple faith. You know? And when God allowed that to happen, He educated us to have this kind of thinking to be able to put God on its preeminence. That means to say that God is above everything else. In your work, in your ministry, so many people today, they put their work above God. And others, they put work is equals God. No, that is not what God is telling. Amen? Regardless of our background, regardless of who we are in the front, in the sight of God, God wanted us to be able to get rid of this wrong thinking, to refine. And God wanted us to have the kind of mind that is set in the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Alam niyo po that the battle is always being fought in the mind. Are you with me? That is the battleground of the devil. Even when you are just sitting down, even if you are lying down, your mindset is very important. It must be protected. And Jesus rebuked, rebuked the woman. And Jesus was telling the woman in verse number 10, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him. Amen? In other words, the woman, she had this kind of stronghold that she don't want to have dealing. She want to put a boundary between the Jew and the Gentile. In other words, she was so uh, insecure. And you know, in life, we wanted to be accepted by other people. And when you got saved, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, in whom after you trusted, the gospel of your salvation was shared to you. The Bible clearly states that you have been accepted in the beloved. Amen? Amen? Whoever you are. Number two, this woman was enticed with wrong timing. She said in verse number 11, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou the living water? You know, when you come face to face with God, you cannot make any alibis. When God put everything in the light, do not make any alibi. You cannot justify your situation before God because God knows everything. Amen? Amen. So the woman was uh, justifying and she said, 
Thou hast nothing to throw with, and the well is deep. From whence thou that hast that living water? She did not understand the plan of God. When God rebukes a man, all that you need to do is just humble yourself and accept God's will in your life. Yeah. The second person that Jesus rebuked is not only the woman, but the disciple. The disciple came. And they marvel. And then verse 29, verse number 30, it says here, Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. And he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not all. You see, in life, if you knew the will of God in your life and then you do it by the grace of God, you will all, it will always be a safety for you. Uh, Amen? Ibig sabihin no, kung ano ang kaluuban ng Panginoon at yan ay ginawa mo, that is safety for your own self. Hindi ko safety sa church yun. That is for your own good. Amen? Uh, ang iba sa atin, Alam natin ang kalooban ng Panginoon, we try to find means to do our own way. The Bible says, My ways are higher than your ways. So are my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Amen? The Lord knows. God knows what is best for you. God already knew. 20 years from now, 10 years from now, what will happen to your life. Are you with me? Uh, he knows. Just stay focused. Just stay faithful to the Word of God. God will always elevate your life. That is what God said. And Jesus was telling the disciples, My meat is to do the will of Him that sent me and to finish His work. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that if you want God, if you want God to be pleased with your life, just like what He did to the Samaritan woman, she rebuked the Samaritan woman because of her stronghold. She rebuked the Samaritan woman because of her sin. And then she rebuked the disciples because of their misplaced value. Uh -huh. Sabi ng Panginoon sa verse number 30, 32. I have meat to eat that you know not of. And in verse number 33, Therefore, said the disciples one to another, Not any man brought him all to eat. And God was telling them in verse 34, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Now what is the most important task of society Bible Baptist Church. Uh -huh. Right? Let me challenge you. The most important task of every member of the local church is to be able to obey the Great Commission. Uh -huh. What is the Great Commission? To go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Praise God that even Sunday afternoon you are almost back. Amen? Amen. Amen. Napakatindi. You know, it's it's so nice to stay at home during Sunday afternoon. And if you do not know, your presence in the local church here is a blessing and encouragement to your pastor. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing. Alam niyo po, kahit hindi ka pa nakaupo ka lang dyan, it's already a blessing for someone preaching. Kaysa, pumunta ako sa uh, I was there last last month in in uh, Sydney. And you imagine I was asked to preach in the Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. Pero mo na preach ako yung ang ang haba na mga upuan. The first, second, third, fourth views. Walang tao. Resurrection Sunday. Iyan sa kabila naman, sa isang view, isang mag husband lang and wife, sa pangalawa, a couple, pangatlo, tatlo siguro, 
kung konti lang talaga. Sabi ko sa mga church member doon, I cannot preach to the spirit. I must be preaching to the body and the soul of men who are present. Uh, and you know what? Sometimes it becomes discouraging for a church pastor to be able, for a speaker to be able to preach. And I want you to know, this morning I preached two times doon po sa Bulacan. And traveling last night, I preached until 9 o'clock in the evening. Uh, can you imagine early morning, uh, Pastor Dilfin picked us up in the hotel at 6 o'clock ready to have breakfast and then brought us and sabi ni Pastor Dilfin, Pastor, ikaw na mag Sunday school, buuhin mo na. Sunday school, I preach in the Sunday school, I, I told the Sunday school, I preach in the world worship service and then fellowship of the words. And you know, to tell you honestly, sometimes the spirit is willing but the flesh wanted to sleep. Uh -huh. Amen? Do you, do you understand what I'm telling you? Amen. Gusto mo na maghanap ng una? Amen? Hindi ko pa alam yung ma-priest pala ako ngayon. Amen? But you know what is our joy? To be able to do the will of God is better than sleeping. Amen? It's all better and I'm glad. I'm glad. You know, you are not the like the church in Australia I was preaching. While I was preaching, there was an old man looking at me and after a while he, he was, you know, having a beautiful eye and after a while <laughs> he fell into sleep at Friendship Baptist Church. And, uh, you know, sometimes it becomes so discouraging. But I want you to know, your present that is being spent in hearing the Word of God that very same word of God will sustain you and be able to encourage you in times of your need. It will comfort you. Amen. Kaya nga, pasalamat tayo. Amen? That there are still churches that is preaching the word of God in the pulpit. Amen. Eh, yung pastor niyo pa, pag narinig mo yan mag-preach para mabiyak yung pulpit. Amen? But praise God, it's not the word of man's wisdom. It's a demonstration of the power of God. Amen. Kaya it is very vital, it is very important. And so the disciples were rebuked by the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because they entertained wrong thinking, they, they were entangled with wrong timing, and then number three, they were enticed with wrong target. The Bible says, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields. By the way, believers, so many times in our lives, we are only looking at the things that are temporal rather than on things that are eternal. Amen? You go home. You try to make an inventory how much you have invested for physical rather than eternal things. And based on the word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ he rebuked the disciples and Jesus was telling them, Say not ye, there are yet four months and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. I hope God will always give us an eye that will always look up for the things that are eternal rather than on things that are temporal. Yeah. Uh, Amen? Amen? You can balance your life with it. You make an inventory of your life. You are so much investment on physical rather than on spiritual. Oh, Pastor, there are times in life that we have need but I want you to know, most of the need that we have is only for temporal needs. Amen? Uh -huh. But Jesus wanted us when, to have the eye that is sanctioned with divine vision. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ when He said, When Jesus saw the multitudes, He was moved with compassion. Every time, you take an LRT or MRT or buses or big places where huge crowds are coming in. What moves you? 
Is it the it, is it the modesty of people? Is it the hairstyle of people? Or is it the need of people for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Huh? You need to have a gospel trucks everywhere you go. Amen? Okay. Give gospel trucks to people. And, and our missionary was telling Dr. Babius, if you want people to go to hell, let them go to hell with the gospel trucks in their hands. Uh -huh. Amen? That means to say, you need, when, whenever you go, you are lining up, have a gospel trucks, give. Pastor Paritan, we were driving on the on the, the highway uh, of English. Every time he paid, there is a gospel truck being given to the person collecting pay, uh, collecting the, 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 the fee. Because, folks, the word of God is the only lasting thing in this life. When the word of God is preached and the souls of men are saved, that is a worthwhile. Because you are actually looking at the things that are eternal. Uh -huh. We need God to refine our thinking. We need God to refine our timing, our target. And then God said in verse number 36, he that reapeth, receiveth witches, and gathereth fruit into eternal life. That both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. What does it mean? God is telling the people, rebuking the disciples, that if you are willing to invest for something that are eternal, the Bible says, you will receive the blessing from God. Uh -huh. Amen? This is not just having a church here in this place. This is more than just preparing the church. This is not just singing in the choir. This is not just giving your tithes and offerings. Folks, you want to invest for something that is lasting. Amen? Uh -huh. 12 years ago, I mean, 28 years ago, we had invested our lives in General Santo City. Today, they already have 12 Liberty Bible Baptist Church in General Santo City. Wow. The other day, Pastor Jun Dula said, Sir, because he called me Sir, I called him Sir. He told me, Sir, we will increase your support. Uh, we will increase your support this 100%. Uh, Can you imagine 100% increase support? Wow. Amen. <laughs> uh -huh. That we go, wow, what a blessing. Uh -huh. And they are the highest supporter in all of the churches today in the Philippines. Uh -huh. And why is that so? Because somebody had planted the seed. Planted in their hearts, grow up. And that seed continue to vibrate in the hearts of all the people that have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. There was a time in General Santos when we had the mission work. We had a time to build our building. And I put in the building, this building is financed by faith. I put this, I put there. The sanitary permit, the electrical permit, you know, you know what, what I'm talking about, right? And then I put there the plumbing permit, and then I put there because I saw in some building, this building is financed by Metro Bank. Uh -huh. This building is financed by BPI Bank. I put there, beneath, beneath the, 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 the inscription, I told them, this building is financed by faith. Uh -huh. Amen? Uh -huh. Because we wanted that the people there will see nothing else except the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. who can honor the faith of His people. And we are getting our, our uh, materials to one hardware. Alam niyo po, kahit ilang material ang kukunin ko, the hardware will give. 
pastor, you get anything you want, you get any amount. You just pay it every week. Can you imagine the blessing? Huh? Ngayon, utang kami na utang para ipatayo yung building. Hanggang dumating sa punto, wala na kami mabayad. Wala na kami ibayad. And it was so difficult. Sabi ko sa mga members, ito ko na tayo, pahinga tayo. And you know what happened? The owner of the hardware came looking for the property of Liberty Bible Baptist Church. And drive the door. And you know what he saw? The owner saw the inscription, this building is financed by faith. Pero yung mga yung mga angle bar ay kalawang na. Kalawang na. Mahaba na yung mga halaman ay yung mga grass. We cannot afford it. Because it was so heavy. And finally, when the owner came to his office, he called me up in the telephone. And he said, Pastor June, please come to the office. Sabi ko, yari tayo dito. <laughs> Pinatawag na ako. Ang nasa isip ko, they will ask me to pay our debt. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Sabi ko, sige, punta na lang ako When I arrived in the office of the big hardware shop in General Santos, here is what happened. Samuel Ang, the owner, said, Pastor, this is my brother Robert, and this is another brother, Danny. All of us, we decided to help your church building. Wow. Amen. And you know what really helps him? Because he told me, I went to the church property, I saw the inscription, this building is financed by faith. And God touched my heart to help you. And you know, he prepared, uh, yung sa table niya, may gold dilap on. Yung gold dilap, kami niya, this one is for your children. Wow. But you know, my eyes was looking at the three envelopes, not not to the gold dilap. <laughs> <laughs> this one is for your children. Eh, oh, e, makapal yung envelope. Nasa, nasa harap ng kanyang table. Sabi niya, this one, Pastor, is for your church building project. Wow. Kung tinanggap po, napakakapal. And my mind is slowly calculating. Sabi ko, pag tag-100 ito, makapang ito kasi ano? Ikong tag-500 ito. Habang nagasalita si Samuel, hindi na ako makakonsentrate. Sige ko na. Ilagay ko noon, sabi ko, yes, yes. Pero yung isip ko, siguro more than 10,000 ito. And then the second in below, he said, Pastor, we want to help all the missions that you are helping as well. Makapal din! Hindi, dalawa na ang ginakalculate ko, hinahawakan ko ganyan. And then number three, sabi niya, itong number three in below, Pastor, this is for your family. Ay, mas lalo, para makulaps ako. Ito mong tatlong in below. Ang kapal-kapal. Kaya nagsakaya ko ng tricycle, daladala ko yung gold nila, sakaya ko ng tricycle. Sabi ng tricycle driver, Sir, saan tayo? Sabi ko, sige, drive ka lang, mag-drive ka lang. Drive ka lang. And you know, the amount that the owner gave is exactly the same amount that we owe from them. Saan ka makahanap ng gawain ng Panginoon na yung utang mo, ang owner mismo ng hardware ang magbabayad. Amen? It's only because these men, these wealthy men, they are wealthy people in General Santos. And they said, Pastor, we want to invest in something that we lost. 28 years ago, they had helped us in investing money every Sunday, every month. They are giving money to the church. Kahit wala na kami doon, still, when we were in Ethiopia, every month they are supporting us with $400 every month. 
Can you imagine how God blesses those people? Today is a big landmark of what God has done because these people, they have refined their mindset when it comes to investment. Uh, amen? Hey, alam niyo po, lahat na bagay na in-invest mo pas para sa sarili mo, nawala yan. But your investment for something that are eternal, it will always last. Amen. What are the eternal things? The souls of men and the Word of God. When you preach the Word of God, folks, I never, I never had regret in my life. My wife and I, when we surrendered our lives full time in the ministry. God has always been good. Wherever we go. God has always been good. We were there in in Perth uh, last month. When we were there in Perth, there was one couple who got saved. The American, I, I mean the Singaporean and Malaysian. You know, after the service, they were so happy. They said, Pastor, because of you, it's not really me, but you know, the gesture is, because of you, you witness to my husband and to my son, today we are a member of the Metropolitan Bible Baptist Church. Amen. Wow. Yung pinakamaganda pag pag may na pag may bigay na envelope sa iyo, you know, that's something that you did not expect. Apo. Wow. Binigyan ako ng thank you card. Wow. Makapal din, makapal sabi ko. <laughs> hindi na ako nag nag I did not wait na matapos pa ang service. Punta ka punta ka agad ako sa CR. <laughs> Kahit hindi ko na ako maihi. Kasi, you know, I want to count God's blessing. <laughs> Amen? Uh -huh. But you know, all of this is because there are people, there are people that they appreciate and they knew that when they spend something where the Word of God is preached and the souls of men are saved, it's a worthwhile investment. Amen. And sometimes my wife will be very happy to come with me as he sabi niya, Dad, I will go with you. Kasi, kahit nakaupo lang siya, look up here, kahit nakaupo lang siya, bibigyan siya ng nag-gift. Totoo yan, kanina, graphic, sikaw ko, Prince Apos, graphic, pinapawisan ako kahit irkun. Boom! Siya, nakaupo lang, tapos pa smile, smile. Eh, may nag-gift! Sabi ko, Kaya young ladies, you ought to be a, a pastor's wife. Amen? <laughs> because God knew, kahit pag-upo ka lang, bibigyan ka ng love gift. No, I'm not really talking about money here. I am talking about people who love the preaching of the Word of God. And they are investing their lives in the ministry of mission. This is not really about mission. I mean, this is not really about, you know, just sitting down, going around. And my brother, Jonathan, he was a, a mechanical engineer in San Miguel, you know, big company. Big company. He is always sent by his company to go to Japan. Japan. And he said, told, can you imagine, I spent my time in my engineering life, working in company for almost 30 years. And here is you. You are preaching the word of God. Mas matindi pang lugar na abot po kaysa akin. Uh -huh. <laughs> Totoo yun. He already went to Australia, to Hong Kong, to Cambodia, Vietnam, and then Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Africa. For me, I've been working all my life. And you know what happened? This year, he was paid by his company. After many years of service, and the blessing, he said, I owed you some money. Can you imagine? For so many years, he owed me some money. Dahil pinayaran siya ng kanyang company, look up here, he wanted to pay off all his debt to me. And you know what a blessing? The Lord knew that we needed money to go to the mission field. Uh -huh. And who God used, God uses my brother. Uh -huh. 
And he knew that my son is going to enroll in music and ministry in Australia. And studying in Australia is very expensive. Uh -huh. Can you imagine you will pay half a million just to study music and ministry? Where will you get the money? My son said, Dad, I told my son, even the pastors in Australia, even the members, Pastor, where are you going to get the money for your son's enrollment? I said, God. And you know what happened? My brother told me, I will help your son in his tuition fee. Why I was jumping 10 feet above the ground. <laughs> Amen? Kaya nga, sa kakaisip ko, paano magkakuha ng pera na, na panaginipan ko tuloy si Manny Pacquiao? <laughs> ang nagbigay ng chiki. Ang totoo yun? Eh, ginising ako ni Mrs. Sabi ko, saya na magkaroon timing pagkagising mo. Oh, ano niya, bakit? Kasi bibigyan sana ako ng half million ni Manny Pacquiao. Ngayon, you know what? How God allowed it to happen? Because there are people who knows that in preaching the word of God, God will use people to be able to finance your desire to preach the word of God. Amen. And this has been proven by Mom Israel, Pastor Jeremiah, with the pastors here. Well, we had we had a pastor, nanganak uh, si Pastor Julius. My, I tell you, he, he was in the hospital with bill of eighty thousand pesos. Ay hindi si Pastor Julius nanganak yung visit niya. You know, hindi niya alam saan ko kumpleto yung pera. You know, some some circumstances may happen, but I want you to know if you are faithfully preaching the word of God, God will always touch the heart of people. Na kahit patay na, gigisingin pa ng Panginoon yung patay na yun. Yeah. Ito yun. Meron akong member, meron akong nag-preach ako sa, sa Australia. Have you heard the story? Yung isang member na katulog-tulog. Tapos, after few weeks, bumalik ako sa Ethiopia. Nagsulat yung, the, the pastor wrote me, he said, Pastor, you remember the old man that was present when you preach in our church, eh sino namang hindi makalimot no? Kasi habang nag-preach ako, patulog-tulog lang. Magaling kayo. Hindi ko talaga makalimutan. Sabi ng pastor, the old man died. But had left a fortune in the bank. Dahil war veterans pala yun sa Australia. Inamatay. Malaki yung pera sa bank ko. And you know what happened? The old man left the will of testament. And sabi niya sa will of testament, all my money in the bank will be given to Friendship Baptist Church. Uh -huh. Please sing yun. Amen? Amen. And then he set aside. I set aside $3,000 for the work in Ethiopia. Mas lalo please sing yun. Uh -huh. And then I wrote back Pastor Drew Paul. I said, Pastor, please let me know. Let me know where do you want the money to go. Pastor Drew Paul said, today is his birthday. Drew Paul. He told me, Yun, whatever God leads you to do, you use the money for God's glory. I bought the motorbike in Ethiopia. I bought some stuff for my wife and then I traveled every villages and preached the word of God. Because of that motorbike, there were three churches that was built in the villages of Ethiopia. The old man is already dead. Are you with me? But the Ethiopian churches becomes alive and they receive the preaching of the gospel. Today, there are two Ethiopians coming back to the Philippines. They had already finished in Bible college for three years. They went to Ethiopia, continued the ministry, and then they come back to be able to raise money because they had, they had surrendered their lives fully. They want to continue the legacy. And you know why? 
because somebody had invested their lives and their money so that these people can accept the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The old man is dead already, but the church is was made alive. And that is what we, we are telling you about investment. I'm going to close. You have to learn to invest for something where the word of God is preached and the souls of men are saved. Amen? Amen. You invest your life to your pastor. You invest your life to the workers. Ito mga soul winner, pakainin mo ito, mas lalong magiging soul winner ito. Amen? No. It's a worthwhile investment. You know, I love to invest for churches who are winning souls. Right now, we are investing around 10,000 every month to the missionary. Hindi mo ito, pag ano lang, this is not to brag ourselves, but to provoke you. Because the word of God, once it's being preached by the missionaries, by the workers, by the pastors, in every place, even we cannot go, you have a part in the preaching of the word of God. Amen. You must be willing to invest. You look at the fields through your profession. You look at the fields through your work. You look at the fields through your business. If you have business, you to be honest with your business and then give that uh, profit to the preaching of the word of God. Amen. And God is going to bless you more. Amen. Why? It is already mandated by God that you could never outgive God in your life. The more you give to the Lord, the more you give to the Lord, God will repay you. Double, even triple, because the Bible says that if you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men give unto your bosom. Uh -huh. Do you believe that verse? Yeah. And the Bible says, For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Hindi uh -huh. ako nagsasabi niyan ang salita ng Panginoon. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And when you do that, God will always bless you. I have a man by the name of Bado. He is called as Bado. Nagtitigdan lang siya ng hupya noon. 20, 30 years ago. Nagtitinda ng hopya. Hopya, pag may makita siya na pastor, libre. At hindi yun. Pastor ba doon? Nag-meet kami last week doon sa Mindanao. And then, titinda lang siya ng hopya. After selling hopya, he developed that kind of sense na ito gusto niya magtulong sa gawain ng Panginoon. Para makover niya ang Mindanao, Nagiging employee siya, na level up siya, nagiging salesman siya ng isang hopya company. At saka big shop company. Ang tawag sa company, affiliates company. Ang driver niya, tapos nagbubuking siya ng mga, mga sari-sari store. Ang desire niya, gusto niya maikot ang buong Mindanao para mamit niya yung mga pastor na nagsimula sa gawain. It was during that time, that we started the ministry in General Santos. He came one night, and he said, Pastor John, ayo, you know, tao po. When I opened the light, I saw him with a panel called Ophelia's Big Shell. Sabi niya, Pastor, pwede pa kami makatuloy dito sa mission house niyo. Pinag-iisip ako, wala kami, wala kami matulugan, wala lahat. Sabi niya, wag ka mag-alala, Pastor. Meron kaming balik dito yung balik. Meron kaming unang dala. Diyan lang kami sa sala niyo matulog. Sabi ko, sige. He put their bed there, their mat, and then they sleep. The following morning, they woke up early, they bought one sack of rice, they give food to us. And sabi ko, Pastor, sana every month, every month punta kayo dito. Amen? Kasi, yung desire niya, Bawat mission church na mapuntahan niya, mag-invest siya. Anong nangyari sa buhay niya? Yung office speak siya, anong nangyari? 
na bagsak. Bagra. Alam niyo anong ginawa na Panginoon? Dahil sa kanyang naipo na pera, pinili niya yung siya na na bagra. Amen? Pinili niya. Pinalitan niya ng pangalan. SLB Bexia. Silver Light Bexia. You know, during the time, he had an income. Every time he had the income, yung ginagawa niya, magbigay siya ng tithes. Ang bawat churches na mapuntahan niya sa buong Mindanao, may ikutan niya sa panel, binibigyan niya ng blessing. Amen? Amen. Anong nangyari? Today, after 30 years, you know, magkano ang income ng tao na yun? He had around 46,000 income. Every hour. Uh, Amen? Uh, 46,000 an hour. And you know, he became a pastor and last week, he preached in his brother's church and he said, we have declared that the company this year will give 95% of all the income to the church. I tell you, 95% belongs to God. Only 5% belongs to them. You know what? God continually is blessing the ministry. 30 years ago, today, he became a millionaire. Why? Because he wanted to invest for something where the word of God is preached and the souls of men are saved. Amen. Learn to invest for something where the word of God is preached. Learn to invest for something that lasts, even outlast our lives. Kahit wala na tayo dito, manatili pa rin yung investment natin. We are no longer in Ethiopia, but the people are continually preaching the word of God. We are no longer in Jinsan. And folks, I believe that if you want God to bless you more and more, you have to tell to the Lord, Lord, please help me, guide me, and direct my life. I want to bless you with what you have blessed me. 